Hello and welcome back to Pentiment. We have 19 hours remaining until the Archdeacon gets here, and well, we haven't discovered as much as we'd want, but we've also discovered quite a lot. We've discovered somebody with means, motive, and opportunity in uh, Prior Forenic. He has um, means, he has the weapon. Motive, he was being blackmailed. Opportunity, well, he's in the Abbey all the time, so it seems likely that he could have been around that area at that time of day. So, Prior Forenic seems pretty good. Sister Matilda, not so much. Like, we don't know how she did it. Like, if it was her. Now, she could have used the weapon from Prior Forenic, but now we're creating a conspiracy. And a conspiracy is much harder to prove than a single person, I would say. Um, other things that we need to do. We need to make sure that we have all of the loose ends that we can get tied down. We're assuming the game is not going to end in 19 hours. We're assuming... That in 19 hours, the next part of the game is going to start. We want to go into that the best that it can, we can do it. Now, it could be that in 19 hours, the game just says, who's the person who did it? We choose our option and then that's it. But I suspect not because one, we suspect there's going to be another murder. And two, I remember reading an interview before this game came out saying that... Um, the mysteries would have multiple outcomes and you could potentially go for an outcome that was incorrect and not know it and that the game would continue. Now, I'm not sure whether this is, you know, developer stuff. I mean, I still remember the days of Peter Molyneux saying, uh, if you plant a tree here and you come back, it will be a full grown tree. And then that not quite being true for Fable 2. But, you know, um, we're going to assume that it's correct right now and we'll work on those assumptions. So, we need to go find somebody to eat with. Uh, that's our current goal. And we have a couple of different options. Now, um, there was one option suggested to me, um, which we're not going to do. And the reason we're not going to do it is not because um, like, I have anything against it. It's because they're currently not part of our investigation. So, they may give us useful information, but... I'm going to keep it to people who are currently part of our investigation, just because I feel like that's the correct way for us to play it right now. It might not be in the future, but we'll see. Um, out of the pe and just to, if you're curious, that one was the charcoal burner, because currently we have no reason to investigate them. So if we're going to RP it, you know, we, we have no reason to go and talk to them, even if they may have information right now. We may in the future, if we have a reason, then don't get me wrong, we'll run right over there, but... We just don't seem to have, like, they have no connection currently. Uh, I'm just going through other people. The bakery, again, no real connection. Midwife, uh, I don't think you have a connection that we uh, care about. We could go and eat at the Abbey, which is not a terrible idea. Um, that would pretend, oh wait, no, that's not the Abbey, that's Brother uh, Sebhat, right? Yeah, so that would be uh, having a meal with the townsfolk and himself. That could be okay. Um, I suspect that the Johann Bauer farm could be interesting as well, or the Franz Bauer farm. Either one of those could be an interesting place to go eat. I'm gonna go... You know what? Let's go to um, Brother Sebhat's thing. He asked us to go to it. We said we would. And to be honest, uh, it might allow us to speak with a few of the um, members of the Abbey. Maybe speak to a few witnesses? That would be good. Hey, you. It's time for us to go eat. God bless you, Andreas. You have time to eat with me and some of the townspeople. Uh, of course, I'll talk to Gret and see who she wants to come along. Which one's Gret? Okay, cool. Um, where should we meet you? At the shrine to St. Moritz. I'll see you there. Until then. And off we go. Oh my, Andreas. Yes? All th um, are these all the mothers from Tassing and their children? Well, no, I don't think it's all of them. Helena uh, Pfeiffer couldn't uh, make it. It's a long walk up here in her condition. And Hetty said Hans was too big for stories. Hetty and Hans? These two? Stories. Um, I may have said something about your books. Ooh. I like stories. 
Yes, maybe a little too much. Ha, ah, alright, I can tell a story. But first, let us pray together and eat. Oh Lord, thank you for bringing us together as you brought Jesus to his disciples on the road to Emmanus. I don't know why I saw the red writing and immediately I was like, oh, something to click on. No, I think it's unlikely they have a picture of Jesus in this game. With the breaking of bread between us, let us recognize each other as Christians and rejoice in our salvation through you. Amen. Amen, 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 uh, amen. And I thank you and your husband for this bread, Gret. I, Ulrich, always says that bread brings people together. That's the moody looking, that's the moody looking baker. As I said, the moody looking baker. Um, I missed this while I was in Florence. Yes, we'll just take a casual moment to mention our trip to Italy. Don't have bread in Florence? Wow. Where's Florence? South, over the mountains. Last week, the blonde lady at our house with the pretty cloves. She was from Florence. Oh. Brother Gurnot eats white bread, does he not? Yes, the finest wheat is used for the abbot's bread. Why? The abbot is a very important man, Paul. We have bread in my home that we call injera. We make it thin, round, and wide, and we put our food on top of it. We eat it with almost every meal, as you love the bread of your home, so I miss mine. I mean, like, there's no way that we can't eat the bread here. Ooh, what's the recipe? Maybe we could make it. Thank you, but no. We use a fine grain that does not grow here, called teff. Um, surely someday you'll go home and can have your fill of it. God willing, yes. But then perhaps a day will come when I miss the rye of tassing. It's a great danger that comes with the blessing of travel, living a life between worlds. Alright, we'll eat the almonds. I don't want to talk about bread anymore. It's so boring. Bleh, bleh. Don't be rude, Bert. I did say I would tell a story. Children, have you ever seen a Bible? Father Tom. Oh, where are you going, Ursula? Nope, she's just going to have a look. Yeah, Father Thomas has one. It's huge. My dad has one. It was painted in Bamberg. Very good. This is a Bible from my home that I have brought to give to the abbot. Andreas, do you have a favorite story to illustrate from the Bible? Ooh, which one are we going to go for? This is probably not the best story for the children. I would imagine that's not going to go down too well. When Gabriel appears to Mary? I don't know. I don't know Elijah and the Chariots of Fire. I've, I've heard Chariots of Fire, but I, my Bible knowledge is not very good. I also haven't heard of Jacob wrestling with an angel. Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil? That's a fairly classic one. That one's okay. Adam and Eve. Yes, at the beginning of it all, the fall of man. It's good for us to be reminded of what we lost in Eden. Now then, children, do you know the story of Jesus feeding the multitudes? Oh, it was literally just asking for a favorite one. He's not going to read it to the children. Well, that makes sense. Fish and loaves. My mom and dad make loaves. Oh wow, we're in it. This is from our Bible, how we tell the story of how Jesus fed thousands from only a few fish and a few loaves of bread. Why is everyone brown? Because where I am from, everyone looks like me. Why? Because we are all as God has made us. I know Tassing seems big to you, but the world is so much bigger than we can imagine. There are many people of different colors all over the world. There are places where no one looks like you or me. Really? 
It's true, in Venice I saw people come from across the Mediterranean Sea. Never miss a chance to mention our trip to Italy. Not just like Brother Sephat, but people of different places and cultures even farther away. Persians, Moors, Ottomans, each with their own way of speaking and dressing, their own customs. Brother Sephat, did you know the Baron who was murdered? A way to bring it back down to reality. Bert. Ooh, that, that's not a great look we're getting. It came up when I was visiting the Druckers. Ah, if I hadn't told them about the murder, then potentially this wouldn't have come up in this conversation. I'm sorry, Marie. There's nothing to apologize for. We can't shield them from the world forever. I did not know him, Bert, but do you know the story of Lazarus? Um, no? He was a friend of Jesus. He became sick and he died. Die, uh. Hat. Jesus brought his followers to Lazarus' tomb. He prayed to God, and when they opened the tomb, Lazarus emerged, returned from the dead. Jesus can bring people back from the dead? He can, Bert. One day Jesus will bring us all back from the dead. Well, that sounds mighty inconvenient. Everyone who has ever lived and died will come together and be resurrected on Judgment Day. Uh, that's my hat? We're going to say nothing. She can have her hat if she wants it. But we are going to stare. Even the Romans? Yes, the Romans too. No. Ursula just likes wandering and looking confused. Why did you ask about the Romans? I saw one come out of their tomb like Lazarus. What do you mean, Paul? Ooh? Well, the ruins below the mill, the Roman, they all died a long time ago. I saw one come out the other night. They were in white like Lazarus. Let's stop telling stories, Paul. You shouldn't have been outside at night. Ooh. Andreas, what does he mean? Um... Hmm. We're not going to say this one, but I'm going to say it. I think I may have seen something similar the other evening. What? Really? Where? The same place, by the Roman ruins. Maybe Paul did see a spirit of some kind. Well, that wasn't really my intention. I was meaning to say, basically, you know, maybe it was real, given we both saw it. And maybe that means there was a person there, but I guess not. It's a very dire omen if that's what he saw. I will pray on this. Ah, apologies for that, ladies. But thank you for sharing a meal with me today. I will be leaving for Rome soon, but I am glad to have spent some time with you and your children. Thank you, Brother Sephat. It was wonderful. Don't forget to stop by the bakery before you go. I'm sure my husband will want to see you before you go. I will. God grant you all health. And with that, we move on to sleeping. Do we even have anybody we can talk to? I guess we can check the map, right? Yeah, there shouldn't be any investigation we can do at this point. I think it's just sleeping. Unless we want to see whether anyone's, like, around at night. Excuse me? You got one flashing star. That's fine. Uh, head along here. You know, gotta check the crypt. It's one of these few things that's open at night. Okay, it's not. Uh, and then the only other one is I want to check prior forensic. Well, I wonder if someone's up at the tower. Or oh, we could check math with Matthew. Say like, hey, didn't mean to, you know, pull up your spot. No, he's just like, he's down to business. Okay. 
go into the scriptorium, interestingly. Can we go in here? We can go in the prior's house. Is the prior home? Of course not. Why would the prior be home? I mean, it's like, it's time to sleep. Why would he be in his house? That would be crazy. Well, if he's not in his house, where is he? I suppose we're not looking at, like, you know, the room where the bed is. Then why would he have his door unlocked? Because he lives in an abbey. Like, who's going to steal from him in the abbey? Okay. Well, good points. Good points. We did a good job putting that grave back the way it should be. Okay. We still haven't had a reason to go to the abattoir yet, either. It just was just realizing. Just an area that had nothing in it. We can't go in the dormitory. We're not allowed. Uh, we don't need to go in the refectory. I do want to go to the garden to briefly check whether, um, yeah, the abbot is home. There's Ferenic. There's the abbot. Do we speak to Ferenic? Do we confront him? I think we have to. Andreas, may I help you with anything? I came across an interesting letter from you addressed to the late Baron Rothfogel. What? Where did you get that? Um... Let's see. We could say it was Mikolaus, but the moment Mikolaus comes back, that falls over. Question I made of your writing pad. Were you performing occult rituals with the Baron, or... I think we'll do the orator one. You shouldn't leave this type of thing lying around. An unscrupulous person might use it for devious ends. Because this doesn't look good. It's not as it looks. He meant to coerce me into performing a ritual to help him with a... Condition. But I refused, as the letter makes abundantly clear. The Baron's threat remained, and you know how fickle inquisitors can be about what books people choose to read. It is only a scholarly interest. I am the prior of the Curacao Scriptorium, one of the few of its kind left in Christendom. Modest though the Abbey may be, our library contains works on subjects rarely found beyond its walls, certainly not all in the same place. For men of certain academic interests, it is perhaps the only place where we may meet and discuss them. Yet he threatened to expose you to the church inquisitors. The Baron's interest was more than academic. He wished to make it practical, I refused. There's nothing more to it. I see. Hmm, do we believe him? I don't know. Now, is that all? I have duties I really should attend to. Well, I had a few more questions, if you don't mind. Be quick about it. You rushed into the scriptorium and hid something strange at your desk. Pardon? Why were you sneaky about the scriptorium? Hmm. Um... I can ask questions too. What was so important you had to be late for terse? Let us seek a common understanding, Master Maller, as two brothers in Christ. Please, let's. I'd love to understand things. Grr. The scriptorium is my domain, and you are a guest here. And as so long as that is true, I do not answer to you, but the abbot only. Is that clear? That is not the question to ask, I suppose. Praise be. Will that be all from you, then? For now, be well, Prior Ferenic. Bless you, Master Maller. Defensive and evasive. Hmm. Do we go to the Abbot? I mean, surely he heard everything. I think we have to. No, we can't. Okay. So that must be an arc. Uh, I'm assuming... That's going to be an Archdeacon thing. Like, when the Archdeacon... Um... Oh, there's nothing here. That's fine. Uh, when the Archdeacon appears, we're going to have to, like, present our evidence. And anything that we can get, we're going to want. So, that's fine. And we can't present it early, basically, because the, the point of the game is we have to do it when he arrives. Okay, we'll have a quick check at the abattoir. If it's open, which it isn't. We haven't been in there yet. That's interesting. 
wonder what you need to do to get in there. Maybe a different background can enter the abattoir? Like, uh, maybe if you have a re- I'm trying to think what the other backgrounds were. Like, maybe... I, I don't know. Maybe medicine? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. What, we, what am I talking about? Just check if there's anything else in here. Nope. I'm trying to think what could be... Like... What could be um, doing something there? I don't know. I don't know. Well, there's no reason to go in here. We've already spoken to all of them. We, we've we've finished uh, that line of questioning. The only other thing that we might want to do is see whether we can find... Oh, actually, if we could speak to... Nah, that she's not around. Uh, if we could find... Um, what What's his name? That would be good as well. You know, what's his name has a name. I'm just trying to remember what it is. It's not coming to me, though. Nope. Uh, you know what we could do, though? Have a look at our journal and see whether it tells us. Uh, not Stone Mason's Anger. Not Widow's Curse. Actually, interestingly, it's not even on here. Uh, yeah, the person who ran away. Starts with an M. Something. <laughs> Ooh, what's this one? Paul's drawing, but I thought that one was new. I guess not. I don't know why the name's not coming to me. Was it Matthias? It might. No, because that was the previous uh, abbot. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know who it was. We can check in past here. Nobody is here. That's fine. I'm assuming that Otilia will not speak to us until we do work for her. It, it, it's bugging me. I'm going to look in the people thing. Don't read it. Don't read it. It might spoil. Um, I mean, I suppose Wolf probably isn't going to spoil. Uh, it was Martin. That's the name. Martin. Right. So, uh, Martin. There we go. Oh, what are you doing here? All right, we're going to leave him be for just now. Um, but yeah, if we could find Martin, that would be ideal. Because he would give us a little bit of extra information. He's probably the final person... To potentially see the, um, yeah, to see the Baron alive, which would be good to find out, you know, what happened there. Nothing in North Town. What? what sorry, nothing in Town Commons in North Town. Nothing's been here except the, uh, yeah, nothing's been here except the Doctor. So, yeah, I wonder if the Doctor is like a bigger part of it again. If you take the medicine focus, because, you know. He would seem to be very much like, oh, he went to university. You know, that would seem like a relevant thing. Hello. Andreas, Christ, there you are. Um, Brother Wojslav, what's the matter? It's the Archdeacon. He's come early with an entire retinue in tow. He, he's done what now? He's questioning everyone who knew the Baron and Brother Piero. I've already told him the little I know. He expects to speak with you tomorrow at Norman's. He re requested you specifically. Did he say why? It's no secret you've been poking about the town and the abbey, sticking your nose in the rot. I hope your prying has borne fruit, or Piero's neck will meet the sword. I've done the best of the time I had. I've only had a couple more days. Whatever happens, Piero knows you've been working hard on his behalf, and he's grateful for it. Only, Andreas... What is it? It's just... You know as well as I do, the Baron was not a good man. I'm not saying he deserved what he got, just... You think hard about what you tell the Archdeacon, and who you tell him about. You understand? Mm. You're worried I'll tell the Archdeacon what I've heard of Sister Matilda? All I'm saying is, if in your searching you heard anything about her, I'd ask you keep it to yourself. Um, I'll do what I can to protect the sisters from censure. That's all I would ask of you. I should return to Kyrsau. The abbot will be having a fit right about now. Be well, Andreas. I'll pray for Piero's deliverance tonight. You should as well. Oh no, he's arrived early. We lost all of our investigation time. No, that's not good. Uh, oh, I was going to say hello, but he's, uh, 
you know, asleep. As we should be. Time to sleep. It's getting late. I should get some rest. To sleep. I wonder if we could have gone and uh, saw the Archdeacon now, actually. Oh well, it's too late. We've already got our pajamas on. Oh, we're going into Dreamland? That's interesting. Into a walled city. Well, um... We'll do a little wander. Alright, I'm gonna go this way. Andreas, when are you coming home? Ah, uh, this must be Nuremberg then. Dad, I'll be home soon. Um, I just need to finish this commission for the Abbey. Good, good. And finish that masterpiece too. It's time for you to get on with your career. Yes, of course. You're not going to quit this like you quit university, are you? No, of course not. Good. If it weren't for the work I did for the Rector, you never would have had the opportunity. Most people never get a second chance after they throw away something like that. I know, Dad. Well, I'll see you when you get back. Alright, sure. Oh, Sabine. Oh, it's you. I only have the picture of you, the one my brother Daniel made. I really don't have any idea what you're like. So what are you like? Please don't imagine me telling you in your own mind. Why? You'll imagine I'm wonderful or uh, imagine I'm horrible. Either way, it's not fair to me, is it? The real you? To none of us. Fair. I'll see you soon, Andreas. For real, I mean. I suppose that's true. Until then. Welcome back, Andreas. It has been too long since you have graced this court with your presence. Apologies, Your Majesty. My mind has been preoccupied by a tragedy at Curacao Abbey. What manner of tragedy? The murder of a nobleman, a close friend of the Prince Bishop of Frising. My friend Brother Piero is the abbot's only suspect. I know he could not have done it. How do you know? Examine your assumptions, my fr son. In addition to having no motive and balance not being part of his character, he's not physically capable of the act. He is of limited strength and has a palsy in his hand that makes holding a paintbrush difficult. It's inconceivable that he would have the strength and resolve to kill the Baron with a blow to the head. A whole bunch of inconceivable shit happens on this hell of an earth, Andreas. Hmm. I do not deny that it is possible, but I believe it is extremely improbable. So what do you intend to do about it? When I'm brought before the Archdeacon, I'll tell him what I know about other people who have who had motives to kill the Baron. I have to believe that you'll see there are much more likely suspects than Piero. Why, if you've taken this task upon yourself? I have to save Brother Piero's life. He has no one else to help him. Your love for and devotion to him speak well of your character. A man who is humble before his elders honors also his gods. Of course you'd say that, old man. He is right, though. If Andreas doesn't help him, no one will. Exactly. I understand why the brothers and sisters cannot act against the abbot, but I must do something. Why does that shit for brains abbot care about the death of a useless fart like Lorenz Rothvogel anyway? Hmm. Powerful people get upset when other powerful people are murdered. This could threaten the existence of the abbey. Oh no, the Abbey. Who gives a damn about those hypocritical assholes? In any case, Andreas's ability to prevent Piero's death depends on the judgment of the Archdeacon. Wise or foolish, corrupt or just, the Archdeacon will be the first and possibly final arbiter of Piero's guilt. Andreas must win the Archdeacon to his side using the tools favoured by men such as him.
Reason? Yeah, when's the last time you met a man who was truly ruled by reason? Authority? Despite your talent, you are merely an artist. He has been invested with power by the Prince Bishop of Freising. You have no authority with him. Wisdom? Wisdom cannot, can be shared, but the audience may not comprehend it. Honesty? You must be honest in all things, Andreas, but many are not willing to accept the truth. And the cost of honesty can be high. If reason, wisdom, authority, and honesty cannot triumph, what am I left with? Hope. Lies. Truth. Excuse me, Socrates. Um, what do you mean I can't be... Honesty won't do it, but truth will? What's the difference? Anyway. Above all, faith in providence. Well, what do you plan to tell the Archdeacon, Andreas? There were other people in Curacao and Tassing who had motives to kill the Baron. Sister Matilda was badly beaten by the Baron for resisting his advances. She almost died. Why was the Baron not punished for it? It seems the Baron was beyond the reach of justice, at least at the time. Mother Cecilia sent Sister Matilda away to a hermitage to recover away from the rest of the nuns. How did you come to this understanding? Mother Cecilia told me the Baron had harmed a nun during his last visit but would not tell me more. I crept into the Abbey's library after dark and investigated the nun's admittance records to learn the sister's name. Once I knew the name, I confronted Matilda, and she admitted what happened. You risked a great deal by trespassing in the library. Right, Andreas might have seen the monks and nuns fucking scandalous behaviour. Not that Andreas would know anything about that, hehe. <laughs> Lorenz couldn't get his way with the nun, and he almost killed her for it. I wish I could say it's surprising. Sister Matilda's motive is a powerful one, but by what means might she have killed the Baron? She may have hit him with a shovel. I found a bloody shovel in the con convent garden. She claims she used it to kill baby rabbits. A plausible weapon, to be sure. A shame we cannot confirm whether the blood on the tool belongs to Lorenz. Are there any others you suspect? Brad Ferenic feared the Baron would report his occult interest to Inquisitors. How so? Brad Ferenic and the Baron shared a fascination with the occult texts. The Baron was pressuring the Prior into performing a ritual for him while he was visiting Kyrsal. When Ferenic refused, the Baron threatened to turn him into the Inquisition. How did you come by this knowledge? I found written evidence, a letter from Ferenic to the Baron, in which he discusses all of these matters. It is a dangerous thing, a monk dabbling in the occult. His very soul could be in danger. Forget the soul, he could have defrocked, excommunicated, even killed, all for a little curiosity. Better to stay stupid and ignorant, that's what I say, hee <laughs> hee. We're all, we're well aware. Is curiosity such an awful thing? No, but it was knowledge of the nature of good and evil that caused the fall of man. The seeds of some corrupting fruit may lie sleeping between the pages of many dangerous books. Surprisingly relevant to the passage that we uh, told Sebhas about. I also found a cipher that the prior had left on his desk in the scriptorium. When I deciphered it, the message pointed me to a freshly disturbed grave in the cemetery. I convinced Otto Zimmerman to dig up the grave in question. What did you find inside? Occult tools that Ferenic had hidden. Why hide them? And why leave the note? I suspect he hid them in case the Baron made good on his threat to summon Inquisitors to Kyrsal. As for the note, I am not certain. Briar Ferenic feared loss of his status, his life, and even God's grace. Actually, that's a good point. Why did he write a note mentioning where he'd buried things? That implies... I'm just thinking about that there. That implies that there were two people involved, right? It implies that there was Ferenic involved and someone else. Oh, I just had a thought. It implies Ferenic was involved and you would suspect it has to be another person in the scriptorium because they would be best placed to get that message. Hmm. 
Well, that doesn't bode well. We know it wasn't us. It could be Sister Illuminata. That door in theory opens. She could, in theory, go there. It could be Z Zedana. Again, in theory, the door opens. But I don't think it's either of them. Which leaves us with three choices. It was either Brother Piero, which would be very interesting, because that, that would then put him in the frame for the murder. It could be Brother Adok, but it seems unlikely. Same kind of reason as Brother Piero. Which leaves us with Guy. Guy, who is very friendly with Prior Ferenic. I'm just saying, it could be that Guy is the person who was working with Ferenic. Guy was the person who did the murder. That would line up. That would definitely line up. Interesting. Men have killed for less. I bet the Prior have accomplished the deed. He may have killed the Baron with a silver rod. The Prior used it in performing his rituals, and there are traces of blood on it. If that were the weapon, it has a certain dramatic propriety, at least. It will be a challenge to condemn a Prior for murder, but if that is where the evidence leads, the Archdeacon should see wisdom in it. Are there any others you suspect? I found no other suspects. That's not true, we found Rotilia. Although I guess we didn't find enough about her one to actually make her a suspect. You have brought a worthy mystery before this court, Andreas. I pray to God we have granted you the insight you need to face the coming challenge. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'm prepared to meet the day. Before you go, Andreas, there is one more thing to consider. You will be summoned to the Archdeacon to tell him what you know. But you need not tell him everything. What do you mean? She means you should only tell him about the people you don't mind dying, <laughs> That's one way of putting it. There is a place for a noble lie. This is not one of them. Why, the Baron is dead. All the people with motive to kill him suffered, either directly or indirectly, from his wickedness. Simply mentioning a name to the Archdeacon may endanger them, whether they had anything to do with the murder or not. Right, no point in throwing everyone waist deep into shit, hee <laughs> hee. I protest any attempt at deception, but you must ultimately follow your own conscience, Andreas. A little time remains before you must stand before the Archdeacon. Use it wisely. I will do my best. Until we meet again, Andreas, God be with you. And also with you, Your Majesty. Well, we're now in work. So he wanted to speak to us in at uh, uh, Nons. Which is when? <laughs> I think it's soon. Do we have a clock? I don't know if we have a clock. I don't think we do. But we know it's after now. Hello, everybody. So what are we going to do for our last bit of time? Hello. Hmm, maybe I could go to the spinning bee? Could definitely do that. What else could we do with our time? Maybe there's someone who's only available on this day? So we could go, well, we got basically one more th one more opportunity to get something done. That's what I'm assuming, right? So we can do this one, so we can do the farm, in which case we could do the spelling bee. It kind of seems like we've, not the spelling bee. Why did I say spelling bee? Spinning bee. We could do that, but I don't really think that's going to lead to anything in particular for us. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be good. We could go to Franz Bauer and Widow Kemperton, which would allow us to speak to Ottilia, which would be okay. We go into Tassing. So which one's this? Is that... I don't know where that and what that investigation is, actually. Uh, we could potentially do that, though. And then there's nothing there. I'm going to check what the one in town is. If we can't find it or don't know what it is, or it's not as good, we're going to go see Ottilia for a potential third um, person. So I think it was here, right? I think it's in this area. Maybe it's you? Check the map. Oh, it's actually further along. Wait, is this with um, Lucky? 
He, he previously told us nothing. But you know what? It's probably sensible from his point of view. Do you the investigate? You must be, yeah. Hello. Leave me be, Andreas. Ah, right, yeah, I could try and observe his actions. Hmm. I'll observe Lucky later. We know Lucky had an argument with him, but we don't think that he is necessarily like in line. I think that potentially the one along here is our best bet for something immediately. Like in one singular setting. If we can get another murder weapon, that'd be great. So, Otilia's home. Hello. Back again, are you? You want to talk? Help me around the house and I'll consider it. The work's gonna take a few hours, you know. I don't want to hear any whining. I'm ready when you are, Otilia. Lead the way. Follow me, then. Been needing to collect some firewoods, but I haven't been able to muster the energy. Do you often have a difficult time gathering wood? I'm an old woman. Everything's difficult, and no one's around to help me, not since my husband died. But now stop yammering and get to work. This light won't last forever. You wanna make me actually do it? That's a squirrel. Oh, that's a stick. Yeah, yeah, we'll get the stick, not the squirrel. That, that's a great point. Yeah, another stick. Got it. We're great at this stick gathering game. Next one. Stick. Got it. There's one more stick over here we saw. High octane gameplay. There's the stick. Got it. Fantastic. Is that all the sticks? <laughs> I think that might be all the sticks. Unless there's one along here. Nah, I've got some sticks for you. There, um, there are the trees. Otto's been felling for the abbot. Take off that branch there, the big one. Um, if you ins- Oh, wait. I know Ottilia feels she's been wronged by the Abbey, but the wood does still belong to the Abbot. Um, if the Abbot finds out I helped Ottilia steal from him, he could make finishing my masterpiece difficult. No, if he were caught stealing it, my investigation into Lorenza's murder could be in jeopardy. If I refuse to help Ottilia, she might not tell me what happened between her and Lorenz to make her hate him so. The way she yelled at him the day he arrived, it must have been serious, but serious enough to kill him? Perhaps I could make her see reason. That's technically poaching, Otilia. It's wrong. You think the Abbey doesn't steal from us? The people of Tassing were here before the Abbey was. This forest is ours. Just because some piece of paper somewhere says the land belongs to the church, we can't use it. The people who care for it. Um. What did the Abbey do to make you hate them so? I know the church has its discontents, but you reserve more rage for them than most. You, hmm, nobody's, no one's ever asked to hear about my side of things. Well, I'm not in the mood to talk about it, so you'll just have to mind your business. Leave the branch, we've got enough wood. Aha, uh -huh, we managed to get round the situation by asking her about herself, and she, you know, softened a little bit. That's good. Now, where are we going next? Oh, we're just going to give her the wood? What? I can't choose all these sticks. They're too big. You need to break them down for me. Um, sure, break the sticks. Got it. I need the right si side at a certain length, so break them and forget the leftover scrap. Uh, where should I break them? I'll know it when I see it. Now get snapping, boy. Um, I don't seem to be able to move this, so break stick. Hmm. Fine. It's too short. Maybe I should get a real man to help me. 
I was trying to see whether I, uh, the reason it switched there to that was because I started using the keyboard. I'm trying to see if I can move the, the hands around. I don't appear to be able to. Okay, break. That one's too big. I don't need a club, you buffoon. More than that, Andreas Maller, bigger. I don't seem to have any control over this whatsoever. I'm trying, like, different things. Like, moving the mouse around. This does nothing. I'm just going to keep breaking the sticks. This one's too small and frail, just like you, Maller. This one's too small. Okay. More than that, Andreas Maller, bigger. Okay, I'm just going to break the sticks. I want you to do nicely. I want you to do nicely. Ah, none of these are the right size. I guess I'll freeze to death tonight. Now come help me back at the house. Uh, are you sure this will be enough wood? What if there's a cold snap? Perhaps we should get more. It will have to be, won't it? Unless you mean to come around again. I'm an old woman living alone and summer is coming. Soon I'll only need fuel for cooking, not warmth. Don't worry yourself, boy. I'll be fine. Um, as you say, but I worry about you living alone. Okay, we could talk to her, but I just want to check her house first. Nothing else going on. Okay. I have some mementos from Rannick here. They've gone crooked and I can't reach. Could you hang them for me, Andreas? Easy enough. And please be careful with my pictures. Some are very fragile. And I would hate to lose them to your carelessness. Okay. I'm pressing the buttons as it tells me. All right, let me try this. I gotta tell you, nothing is happening. Let me alt-tab and alt-tab back in. I don't know whether something's meant to be happening on the screen. I think we might have soft-locked. I'm trying buttons. Doesn't seem to be working. Oh, my mouse has disappeared from the game as well. There we go. We got the mouse back. Nope. Uh, Alright, I'm going to go to the main menu. Last save six minutes ago. That seems fine. Right, so we are back and I have fixed the issue that we were having. Basically, the problem was I had a controller plugged in that I wasn't using. What this did is it just stopped us from moving. But this is what it should have looked like. Oh, look at that. That's a much better you know, better way to do this. So if we break it, I think here, it should be good. Let's see. That's too short. So like, here? That one is fine. This one's fine. And then we go there. Fine. You see? This is much better as a game. I think that's good. Like, this one's pretty much good to go. Then here, fine, That's, that'll do nicely, that one is fine, maybe you're more useful than you let on, now come help me back at the house, there you go, see this is better, yes. Right, so this is all the same, but, you know, that's, that's all good. Right, hello Otilia. Alright, mementos from Rannick. They're crooked, could we hang them? Make sure we do it. Right. Now we take this. Now this should... Would you look at that? That's a little bit better. We got the lovely painting of Rannick. Um, I gotta say, he does look a little bit like a cylinder, but, you know, or a hot dog. That's okay. He can be a hot dog. I think you could hang those papers on the table. I can't reach them. Or I can't reach. Ooh, what have we got? Can we read them? Absolutely not. Alright, and hang it. There. Perfect. And then this one. 
a nice signed letter. We'll hang that there. There you go, that looks all right. Thank you for hanging those, just one thing. Remove the cross. Are you sure about that? Don't you gainsay me, boy. What do you plan to do if, oh wait, what? What Attilia is asking of me is sacrilegious. Um, hmm. it, she could be forced to face a church inquisitor if someone found out. I might as well simply for aiding her. I would not speak well to my character or Attilia's when the Archdeacon comes to hear the case against Piero. I wouldn't be able to help Piero if my reputation is poor. If I anger her, I might miss out on information about Lorenza's death. I was like you convince her to put it somewhere out of sight so she won't it won't torment her. That might be enough. What do you plan to do with the cross? Destroy it, of course. The church never did anything for me and took nearly all I had. Why should I be made to venerate it? What did the church take from you? What does it matter to you? Just take the thing down like I asked. Perhaps I could just move the cross to where you can't see it. I understand that you're angry and hurting now, but you might regret destroying it later. Oh, we persuaded her. Would your husband have wanted you to destroy the cross that blessed the home you share together? So because we have the orator background, we get just a massive bonus to persuade, but we also showed special kindness and concern that all worked out. Ironic. He made it, do you know? It always reminds me of him, for better and for worse. Uh, perhaps, perhaps you could move it somewhere out of view. That would be all right. Ooh, what we got here? I'm assuming she didn't mean for me to hang this note. Ooh! Remember your husband, the pain he carried like Job, the Redbird Flies, Matan, chapter. Where did this note come from, Otilia? No idea, I found it on the table the night before Rothvogel died. I can barely read it. The writing's too fancy. Keep it if you want. It means nothing to me. Hmm. You know who I just thought? The writing's fancy, right? You know who else it could have been? Mikolaus. Now, we don't know his motive. But, and we don't know how he would have done it. But we do know he had an opportunity. He told us that Rothvogel had gone out walking. But actually, Rothvogel hadn't gone out walking. Rothvogel had gone to the Abbey. Now, he could have just lied to his uh, manservant. All sorts of things could have happened, right? But that's an interesting omission there. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we could maybe... And the reason I was thinking about him is the fancy writing, right? Fancy writing on that note. Fancy writing on all the notes. He could have been collecting these over the years and then just passed them around when we got to Tassing. He pins the murder on someone else and he gets off scot-free. Hmm. I've got one last thing for you to do if you're willing. Also, if it was him, it might not have been him. It might have been the Baron's uh, widow because she didn't seem to really like him that much, at least in terms of what he was doing. Anyway. I've got one last thing for you to do, if you're willing. A legal document. I need you to read it. The words are too small for my old eyes. My reading's not so good. Well, we are an expert in law. <laughs> I'm not an expert in law. No, literally we are. Nothing would delight me more, Atilia. <clears throat> of course, of that I have no doubt. Let's read the note. Let me see here. Yeah, okay, my chances of reading this are about zero. I, I got Franz Bauer. I recognize that one. Um, any guesses? That looks like some kind of Daedric script. It says, oh. Due to the recent death of Ranag Kemper, his lack of heirs to inherit, your inability to pay fees on the land, your property is forfeit to the church. Hmm. That said, this is all very suspect. I did not complete my law degree, but I smell something rotten in this letter. There are questionable assertions here. Do you have any documentation on Ranig's lease agreement with the Abbey? No, never seen anything like that. I didn't think the lease was with Ranig. 
My family's lived here for over a hundred years. If that's true, then it's quite likely the lease is with one of your father's ancestors, not Rannick. If that lease allows for a partition of the land, you would have the ability to allow others to farm here in exchange for payments to you. Eh, Johan and Franz Bauer never would. They would want they want this land for themselves. Um Well, there's always the Gertners. If not them, the Pfeiffers or one of the other families near the mill? Uh, that could work. I've never had any problem with the Gertners. In any case, it's clear that the Abbey is not being truthful about the existing lease on this property. It seems they used Rannick's death as an opportunity to try and change the existing lease to something more profitable. Yes, Rannick's death. This is all the fault of that monster, Lawrence Rothvogel. If he were alive, I'd kill him myself. May he boil in hell for all eternity. Um, I think it's time you tell me what happened with the Baron. Or, yeah, no, it's time you tell me you you tell me what happened with the Baron. Rannick, my husband, he caught that Rothvogel devil riding through our property and told him rightly to leave. The Baron beat my Rannick for it, beat him so savagely he took it a cane to walk. Even his breathing pained him. Never could breathe deep so long as he lived, which wasn't long at all. Good God. Um, that doesn't sound like Lorenz I, know, I knew. It kinda does though. It seems to be his M.O. That Baron was the worst kind of man. Careless and cruel. He knew he could beat my Rannick and suffer no consequences, so he did. We were not even so low as animals to him. We were furniture. And I knew, I knew after Rannick died, the church would try to take what little I had left. This document only confirms it. All because of Lorenz Rothvogel. I'm going to say nothing. Since Rannick left, I'm just waiting to die. Why should I have gone on living when he is gone? He's not even been dead a year. I hoped I would follow him before the church came for what was left of our life. Inheritance laws are cruel to the widowed and the childless. Just as the church likes it, it doesn't matter, boy. The laws will never change and nobody cares. You know, that's a pretty compelling reason for you to have killed him. I deliberately didn't say that, but okay, I guess we have to. You said yourself you'd do it if you could. What's to say you haven't already? Finally, some honesty from you. This was the real purpose of your visit all along. I'm an old woman, Andreas. Even walking from my bed to the door pains me. How could I kill a man in his prime? Not that it matters. I'm sure I'll take the blame for it anyway, just like I'm blamed for every running nose and throwing horseshoe around here. The people in this town can't wait for me to die. The happy vultures hate me for my contempt of them. None of it matters. I don't care what happens to me anymore. Thank you for your help, boy. You're the only one who's come calling since my Rannick passed, do you know? Now, get out. I need to lie down. Of course, I was glad to help. Alright, we get our last eat. And then it's on to the reveal. I should find someone to eat with. Okay. Now, again, we know that we could eat, in theory, with these guys. I don't think that's our play. Hmm. Who are we going to eat with? Who are we going to eat with? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we go to the Abbey. We can't eat at the Abbey today. Oh. Okay. We're going to head this way. We're going to eat with uh, Johann Bauer. Maybe we can find Martin. Right. Uh, hello. Hey, Andreas. Do you have dinner plans? You should join us for a meal. Yes. That's what I like to hear. I'm starving. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these your gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Alright, what have we got? There's been some chaos up at the Abbey, hasn't there, Andreas? I hear those bells ringing clear across the valley. Sounded like the monks were mustering for war. You haven't heard? A man was murdered, the Baron Rothvogel. 
Good riddance, you wouldn't find many in Tassin crying over one dead nobleman. I don't believe it, you haven't heard, Johan. You had your head in the dirt. I don't attend to gossip, that's your job. You're damn right. Oh, okay. I'll admit this has me interested, a murder at the Abbey. But did it come to pass? I'm still trying to figure that out. My mentor, Brother Piero, was found with the body. He's too frail to have done the deed. We're, we're, we're eating our egg first, otherwise we won't get it. It'll be like, we'll eat the chicken, we'll eat the potage, and it'll be like, you can't have the egg. No, we're eating the egg. Grizzly, what about the blood? Was it everywhere? Some. Too bad. Tell me about the wound. Could you see it? Jesus, Mom. I'm only curious. It's not every day a man's murdered in broad daylight. What if I need to protect myself? You're being weird, Mom. Weird and drunk. Oh, she's drunk? Uh-huh. Do you have any idea who might have done the deed if not this brother, Piero? I am pursuing that question at this very moment. Well, not exactly this moment, but once we're through here. But once we're through here. You want to inspect our kitchen for clues, you feel free. Maybe wash the dishes while you're at it. I got a bit of laundry you can do too. What, Andreas is going to do our chores? Don't be stupid, Hans. Mom and Dad are just being annoying. Anyway, whoever killed the Baron has to be as dumb as a sack of bricks. We're very angry. Does anyone come to mind, Johan? No, and I wouldn't tell you if you did, if they did. No good can come of whatever it is you're up to, Andreas. Once the church and the nobility gets involved, all the peasants are going to get a shit. From one end or the other, it doesn't matter which. Gross, Dad. Hehe. <laughs> oh, I'm eating the potage. I didn't even mean to, but we are. What, I'm right. Hans thinks I'm right, don't you, son? Always, Dad. Uh, at least God granted me at least one respectful child. Ugh, what a suck-up. Speaking of the church, has Johan told you about how the abbot's out to ruin our lives? No? We were supposed to expand our farm, but the abbot's taxes made it impossible. Well, if you told me about this ten minutes ago, I could have told Otilia that there's, you know, somebody looking to expand their farm. Anyway. We can't grow enough barley to feed ourselves, pay the miller's toll, and give the abbey its due. It's not Christian. Um, we're not going to say it's legal under Bavarian law. Like, where's that going to get us? It's not right the way you and the rest of the farmers are treated. That's right. Now that Rannick Kemper has kicked the bucket, that the old witch's land will be forfeit soon. Once Ottilia's gone, her land will be available for us to purchase, God willing. What if Uncle Franz gets to it first? I can't believe you, she's an old lady living all alone. We should be looking after her, not picking scraps from her corpse. Shut up, Jesus. How dare you speak to your father that way? I'm going to say nothing, I want to eat the chicken. I feel sorry for Ottilia. Lord help me, we're going to have a very serious conversation about your attitude, Veronica. Haha, <laughs> you're for it now. Eat shit, hands. Alright, that's it. Andreas, it's been great, but I need to have a talk with my ungrateful children. You tell me we don't get to eat the chicken? See yourself out. Um. Uh, goodbye? Mind your safety on the walk back. The charcoal man and his suspicious friend are about. All right. Bit weird. This is the final thing for you to say to us. But okay. Um, time for us to leave. And uh, let's head up here. Then let's head along towards the archdeacon. Are we prepared? No. Are we going to tell him everything? I don't know. It depends how it's phrased. Hello. Hello, Master Maller. Right. I have no idea how this is going to go down. But you know what I do know? We're going to do it next time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.